Today I'm going to talk about how to prepare for a one day event. One day can be part of a multi day event and uh, in general this is the approach that I take to preparing for any event. So the first thing to do is get an idea of what the course is like and we're going to use the Etap de Tour as an example. You can see that there's details of the course profile which is I think is perhaps the most important thing. You know in this case that it's all on the road, the Etap de Tour, I mean the Tour de France is a road race, but if you're doing an, an off-road event then it's useful to get the GPX file, put it into a, a mapping tool like Strava or Komoot or something like that. And that'll give you some indication of the, um, the conditions that, you, that you're going to be riding on or, or running on if you're doing a running event. But also bear in mind that these things aren't perfect. Like I use Komoot quite a lot and so does Claire, but, um, but it can quite often say you're going to be on a single track and you're not on a single track or you can, some part of the route's rideable but it turns out it's hike a bike, so you have to carry carry your bike and that can be quite frustrating. And then quite helpfully on the Etap de Tour website, it gives you an indication of the calls and the climbs that are required. It gives you the gradients, the average gradients, and also a breakdown of the gradients as you climb. And you can see from the profile that there are a few, you know, there's quite a lot of climbing early on. But then there's a really big climb up uh, called de la Ramas and then, uh, and then a big one up the Duplan at the end. So you, you've got to really save some energy for that. And uh, the second half is arguably could be the hardest, particularly when you look at the gradient of the Juplan, which is um, the second half of which is the, is the hardest part, perhaps the hardest part of the event, because it goes on for a long time. It's when you're at your most tired. So once you've got the, all this information, you've got an idea of the course, you can make some estimates of how long it's going to take you. And then you know what you're training for, how long it's going to take you for the overall event and how long it's going to take you for certain climbs because this the basically the crux of this event and a lot of events are these two big climbs and if you're doing an event that's going to take you more than one day or a bikepacking event or something like that then you can take the same approach look at the course and try and understand what you're going to have to do on each day break it all down like um, one of the people i'm working for is doing the uh, trans pyrenees ride from um, the east coast <laughs> Um, in Spain, uh, cr across some of the Spanish and French Pyrenees, finish in, uh, in near Biarritz. So that's got a lot of climbing in it. He can pick which, is, which are his biggest climbs. He knows how much climb he's got to do each day, roughly speaking, how many kilometres he's got to do each day. And then he, he sort of knows what he's training for. And it's the same with a one-day event, the same with a multi-day event. Get to know what you're trying to train for. Uh, what you need to do to achieve your goals. So you train for duration first, once you're comfortable with the duration that you expect to be able to do for the ride, then you can start trying to get faster at it and, and move towards your goals. Initially, you might want to polarize the approach where you do some very high intensity interval sessions, um, you, you, your threshold type sessions, five by five minutes, or your VO2 max type sessions, six by three minutes, that type of session, three, three on three off type. Thing, so you get plenty of recovery and then you can get close to your VO2 max with your efforts and build your volume of your long low intensity training rides. And then as you get closer to your event, particularly say the, the Etap de Tour, you can see that climbs are fairly long so you can just settle into a, a nice rhythm on the climbs. You do some tempo type efforts. I know a lot of people say, well, you, you should be training in a polarized way or pyramidal way or whatever, but just think about what, what, you know, what specifically are you training for? And uh, for this event, if you do tempo intervals, you can do a, quite a long tempo effort. If you're lucky enough, like we are here in the Pyrenees, to be able to do a long tempo climb, then that's great. But if you can't, then think around out of the box a bit. If it's a very flat area, you can ride into the wind for an extended period, so you can do tempo efforts in that way. And, uh, and if you don't have the environmental conditions or the, the, you know, the terrain, then, then you can do it on an indoor trainer. It's not the most pleasant way of doing it, but then tempo, extended tempo intervals, it's not the most pleasant way of training anyway, is it? And then in that way, you can mimic the train. You can mimic what you're going to see in the event. For instance, if, you would, if you're doing a tap de tour, you could do a long ride and then do a long tempo interval that uh, or break up say it would going to take you an hour or so to get up the zoo plan at the end then you might do a long endurance ride and then do three by 20 minutes at the end of it 
to uh, to mimic what it was feeling like at the end and get your head right because a lot of these long rides are about getting your head right as well as getting your body able to cope with them and then outside your training think about your bike setup is it so so for instance is a, a quite a good event there uh, around the Netherlands race which is obviously the Netherlands is really flat so aerodynamics and being able to ride into the wind is going to be very important so you need to think about setting up your bike so that you can be as aerodynamic as possible get you get aero bars learn to ride on the aero bars without moving around too much and in that way you're optimizing your, your riding position you don't have to get any fitter to go faster if you if you make yourself a little bit more aerodynamic but conversely if you were doing the attack de tour or the pyrenees the trans pyrenees event then your aerodynamics aren't that important because if you when you're going downhill you you're going to be using your brakes so you're not you're not trying to go faster when you're going uphill you're going so slowly so that, that there's not much uh wind resistance so the aerodynamics aren't as important it's getting a comfortable riding position that you can sit on the saddle when you're climbing there's a lot more weight on on the saddle because you you're more upright so uh those aspects of your setup have got to be uh looked into and then of course the important thing on climbing is getting the right gearing so that you can have a sensible cadence looking at that profile the harder climbs come at the end or the longer climbs come at the end in the tap de tour and uh, as a consequence you're going to be tired when you're doing those climbs so looking at the Duplan profile it says it's 11 and a half kilometers and 8.6 percent well you might be able to handle that quite easily if you did that as a one-off but what about when you've ridden for six hours or seven hours or whatever can you still ride up that hill with a nice cadence with the gearing that you've got and if you can't then change the gearing because it's not wimping out to get easier gears it's just common sense so in summary have a, have a look at the website get as much information about uh, the event as you can that's the same for any event if you can get a gpx file get it into one of your favorite mapping tools so that you can understand it in context with your other types of riding or running and then you can make an estimate of how long it's going to take you train for duration first use a polarized approach if you've got plenty of time and then be more specific with some tempo efforts if it's got long climbs in it or even if it's a flat event where you might have to be riding on the flat for sustained periods of time if it's got lots of short climbs you might want to continue with the polarized approach and continue doing the higher intensity interval sessions think about things like setup gearing to be specific for what you need in your event and think carefully about what ifs what if such and such happens what am i going to do about it and, and that's pretty much it you just get out do the training do the event have a great time and let us know how you get on